Welcome to the Running Refresh Podcast, where hot takes and debates on the sport of running are more than welcome in the studio and for the good of the sport. Running Refresh is hosted by Logan Lummel and his refreshing guests. Okay, welcome to the Running Refresh Podcast. I'm joined by Lucas Howitt, otherwise known as Howie. Last year, he was my roommate, just graduated from Western Illinois um, last spring. Fun fact, we are actually sitting in what was his very room, um, so that'll be, you know, interesting to talk about. Um, so, Howie, where are you from? Um, you know, what what did you graduate with? What was your degree? Uh, what are you doing now? Um, first off, thank you for having me. Um, I'm from Warsaw, Indiana, which is just an hour south of Notre Dame. Um, I graduated with ag science with a minor in agronomy and now i work for a small agronomy firm up in north webster just north of where i lived and grew okay, up awesome how are you enjoying that um it's fun i did i did this job for four summers and then i just became a full-time employee in the winter or now for a whole for a whole year now so great Okay, so I'm your host, Logan Lummel, future teacher and coach, current runner, ex-soccer player, just hoping to provide some unique perspectives on running from my guests and learn more about their passions outside of running. Um, you know, today, I have Lucas Howitt. I post running-related content every Sunday at noon. Follow on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, at Running Refresh. Please leave a review, like, follow, and subscribe. So first, I'm going to interview um, Howie, and then I have some overrated, underrated questions for a new segment and then rapid refresh and then you'll get to sign the table and get out of here all right sounds like a plan so, sounds like a plan how does it feel to be back in your own room feels good honestly it's like <laughs> this was my second home i yeah. would like to consider i mean i have home and then i had this yeah i just feel like back in my element away from the parents a little bit because i still live at home as i'm getting a cottage getting done and all that but it's nice just being my own element, just back, <laughs> relax a little bit. Yeah. Feels pretty good. So what do you think of it being turned into a studio? Oh, I love it. Um, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how much you can see from the camera, <laughs> but this is like a closet. Um, I lived like a sardine. I really didn't want to stay in here as much as I could because yeah. it was just like it was tight quarters. But yeah. I love seeing it as a studio. Yeah. So It's fun. And slept slept on the futon last night. How oh, was that? It was pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Uh, I didn't fall off the bed and destroy this place. to hit the <laughs> okay. mics and all that. So, <laughs> all right. So, what is your obsession with almond milk? Well, it's not. You can't call it almond milk. <laughs> it's not. You, Why can't you call it almond milk? Because it didn't 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 come from an animal. First off, it didn't come from a mammal. <laughs> Second off, there was no like no lactation part of it. It's just literally. Someone just took like a bunch of almonds, put some water in it, shook it up a little bit, and it happens to look so like just that. watering down almonds. Basically, and then it has like some sweeteners to it. Okay. And I just it's we took I took a class last semester and we talked a little bit about that of like how, how can you brand it like milk even though there's nothing there's no components to milk in it because there's no it's just, not dairy. just looks like milk. It just looks like milk. And you, we're gonna call. Well, you can't call it just almond, almond smashed up, smashed up almond juice. <laughs> almond like, juice. It can't because it's, it's too big. It just, <laughs> so it's condensed it down to milk. The same reason as other like soy milk yeah. and all that. Okay. And then what? What can you tell us about dirt? Oh boy, <laughs> we could be here for all day. All day. All day. <laughs> um, it's important. We need to conserve it. Can't. It's a, there's a balancing act. Some like you could literally go um, one end of your yard to another in two different types of components, and how we balance. And you can just just balancing that to make sure the nutrients are all fine. Um, make sure it's the most productivity as it can. Yeah. When you grow things, but if we just, it, just boil it down, just yeah, just keep so that's it. what the people should know about dirt. Anything yeah. else? Uh, not, it's not called dirt. It's called soil. Okay, dirt, soil. Dirt's <laughs> at the bottom of your shoes. And it's what you track into the house. <laughs> soil is what makes everything grow and everything look. Fair enough. Look All right, so the people should know that it's not dirt, yeah. but it's soil. It's called soil. It's soil. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so how did you originally get into running? Oh, boy. Um, so I grew up a baseball. I'm going to be a baseball player. Yeah. I had no... I had, 
no aspirations to run whatsoever. Um, but my dad coached baseball, and we, my cousin, uh, we went to my cousin's place because there was a doubleheader my dad was coaching, and he ran, and he got me into running saying, hey, and this is in middle school, and he said, hey, I think you should run because we go and uh, race the same meet as you guys did. And I just got done playing football. And I was like, well, I don't want to be tackling dummy anymore. And I figured I enjoyed doing the mile in middle school or in um, high school, uh, not high school, middle school and elementary school. Yeah. And I was halfway decent. I said, why not we just start with that? And he said I did cross country and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Went back and played baseball because I love, I love the game baseball. And then... High school comes around, freshman year. I had a really good cross-country season my freshman year. Um, and I had to make that dif- difficult decision to do track. And then, as they say, yeah. the rest is history. What made you stick with the sport all the way throughout high school and college, would you say? Um, in high school, as a little kid, I always dreamed about being a Division One athlete. Yeah, I mean, pros are always on my mind as a little kid. You know, every little kid who likes sports wants to go and do pro. But I wanted to be a Division One athlete specifically go to Notre Dame because <laughs> I want to be a baseball player. I want to be the starting quarterback in the second baseman at Notre Dame. Yeah. Um, but after my freshman year, um, I was like, this is a way I can become a college athlete. Okay. Through running. Through running. And just everything fell into place. And then in college, it was – freshman year was tough. But once we started getting the core group of guys that are still that aren't in this house, yeah, and we bonded, and it was just more like, man, this is a good group. I want to be with this group. That's what. Helped That's what me got get you through. through. Yeah. yeah. And then throughout your college track career, what changes or challenges did you endure throughout your career? A lot of changes and a lot yeah. of challenges. Um, I went through three distance coaches in four years which being at a mid-major isn't it can be normal yeah but what we went through was not it wasn't normal um i mean literally when your coach you who brought you here was already thinking about leaving halfway through your first semester challenges were already rise um so i went through a whole bunch of coaching changes different training plans yeah and and with that especially with distance running since there's different ways of looking at that i mean i'm sure you had some higher mileage oh. thinking lower mileage more intensity oh yeah more weight training oh. practice in the morning practicing the evening there's so much oh. with that freshman year we had practice at 5 30 in the morning in cross country uh-huh um and then we next year we had 3 30 and then next year we went up to six and then went back down to three it was just constant changes that way um but yeah i did a lot of different training plans okay. um and then the challenges i was injury prone a lot basically after my freshman year and then that then covid came and yeah it was just what a wild ride what a wild ride <laughs> and then i decided then right after covid um, we we're doing 400. Well, we did mile. Yep. And then we did an all out 400, a relay. Yeah. So we did a, was it a 12 person 400 relay or something yeah, like that? Seven it was to like, 12. it was, it was like 10 versus 10. It was yeah. a 10 by 400 meter relay. Just and right after a mile. Like we were, I'd ran the sec, my second fastest mile. Yeah. We did a mile time trial. And then, so what, what happened when you got the baton and you're more like a 5k, you know, runner, yeah. even cross country guy, right? Yeah. And so you don't run the four hundred no. off. And what happened? I've never had a four hundred timed in high school <laughs> and through college. I never had a four hundred uh, four hundred timed. So I was like, "This is my one opportunity," and it happened. To be well, cool. you were in the lead. As I well. was in the lead, so I'm like, <laughs> I can't give this up. But I mean, I'm in the middle of the relay. But I'm like, I have to give my team the best opportunity. I make it three hundred meters. Here, three pops in my hamstring, drops me. Yeah. Pulled my hamstring. Now looking back, probably should have got an MRI. Probably tore my hamstring. But oh, three different pops, and that was that was the that was the end of really what I could do because I was out for ten months. Yeah, that was tough. It was that was and that was a whole separate challenge within itself is dealing mentally with all that because mm-hmm. 
when you're off for two months at least of like you can't do anything yeah and do what you love and want to do yeah and just i learned a lot okay. through that and even last year of, yeah and that, so now you've had the time to look back you know it's been uh, how many months since you graduated six months or so yeah may so about six months about six months um what was your proudest achievement as a collegiate runner would you say Individually, I would say time wise would be running fifteen thirty one. Um, went up to there was a weekend. We went up to Grand Valley one weekend. I went five k was on a Friday. Yeah, I PR'd in the mile, the three k, and the five k all in one race, and then I come back the next day and PR on the three k. Wow, I went fifteen thirty one. Um, on the in the five k, which overall isn't fast, but for me that's a PR. And then I went nine. At the time, I went nine, nine ten, nine oh nine. Yeah. And that wasn't at that time. That was my PR. So okay. that was my. That was a big weekend. That was a fair. That was the best weekend I ever raced in my whole life. Um, but yeah, for probably like a team wise though, which I was more of a team wise. It's there's no really specific thing that's like one thing that stands out to you. But f- coming from freshman year to graduating, team culture by far changed. Team culture changed for the better, you yep. would say. By far, that's good. And then, what do you miss most about being a coll- collegiate athlete? I miss my teammates. Yeah, I miss waking up and like there was a purpose to going out, and you had you always had someone to run with. There wasn't another, like, there's times where you want to run by yourself, Mm -hmm. or there's individual things, but you always had someone to run with. That's what I miss about the most. Yeah. And being in shape. Being being able to eat anything you really (laughs) want. You're telling me you're not in shape right now? Uh, Not really. (laughs) If you look at the Strava, it's like, what I did to where I'm now, it's it's not. So what is your advice then to current collegiate athletes? Um... Stick it out. There, it, there's days where like this just sucks, or you've had bad workouts, but you always have a group of people around you that are always in that in the same trench. I always like to think of like the war type stuff. Trench warfare. Trench warfare. You always got people in 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 it with you. Yeah, in your corner. In your corner. Rubbing your shoulders. Yep. <laughs> and it might might just. We had a bad run or you just had a bad just workout. But I just say just stick it out because it's that next one. Just keep looking forward to that next yeah. one. Eventually, the dominoes will all fall. Okay. And you've already kind of mentioned this. So what are your thoughts on the program right now at Western Illinois? Oh, just- it's on It's on the up. Without a doubt, it's on the up. Um, came in. I mean, when I came in, it's nowhere where the culture was. People gotten runs just like we were acting like j it was almost like a jv type high school like we knew we were not very good and no one really wanted to be there a lot of negativity but when i left it was there was a purpose there was a drive there was like yeah hey let's get out of this rut and let's let's do something and you guys have started making some noise yeah and not just on like the distance side but you know, awesome. we've got some pole vaulters now, oh. some jumpers. It's it's going to be awesome to see. Oh, yeah. Like, you guys had a full team. My freshman year was the closest we had to a full team where we had we had a jumper. We had a high jumper. But my sophomore through when I finished, it was distance mm-hmm. with a sprinkle of throwers, sprinkle of a sprint. No jumpers. I had no, There was a time we had no jumpers. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was lowly, like... We're taking the Burlington Trailways, and everyone has their own seat, which is nice, but there's... Yeah. Burlington Trailways is the coach bus that we'll take off. Yeah. Yeah. And then, since your college career has ended, how have you remained connected to the sport of running? I mean, I have you guys. I can't, I talked with you guys constantly. Yeah. Just one, or once or twice a week. Um, I did a triathlon. Realize I can't swim, yeah. save my life. Um, and then I'm, I mean, my dad's an assistant coach okay. for cross country. I have two cousins that run, 
One's uh, just committed to run at Indiana Tech, which is a small NAI school. Other one ran down at state finals just three weeks ago. Got a Rocher race down there. Yeah. And so you mentioned triathlon. So you competed in your first triathlon. How how did that go? Uh, I had <laughs> I can't swim. <laughs> um, I made the rookie mistake of not getting in the water right for, um, before the race to see how cold it was. I mean, it was beginning of summer. I thought, hey, it's been hot. <laughs> I, hey, the water's fine. I took two steps in. Got my back wet, and I almost turned back. I said, oh, this is not for me. Yeah. Um, and then for those that don't know, what is a triathlon? Like, what are the components of a triathlon? It's a swim, bike, run. Yep. Um, I did a sprint. How far is each? Uh, sprint was 400 meters. Uh, not sprint. The swim was 400 meters. Bike was 14, and I did a 5K. Um, I had the third, source, third slowest swim out of everybody. I had a mediocre bike, and I had the fifth fastest 5K out of everybody. Okay. So I was like, this is the most backwards thing I've ever done. (laughs) Um, I'll say it's the most humbling experience when you get beat by 64-year-olds. Wow. These 64-year-olds, but their bike, they can... Their bike is insane. Yep, because you want to talk about even playing field. Triathlon can almost even out like an average Joe. Because I can, I proved I have a fast run. But these sixty-year-olds, they can mediocre swim, and they have they have decked-out bikes. Yeah, and, you, and like having a decked-out oh, bike too. It's matters. a lot of yeah. It's a lot of technology. Yeah. That bike, like you can pedal and easily get 20, 20 miles per hour. Twenty, like they're averaging. They're sixty-four. They can barely run. They're running like twelve-minute miles, but they're run, they're biking twenty-two miles per hour, like with ease, <laughs> and they can money. swim like they can swim within ten minutes. Because it's just, it's smooth. Mm-hmm. They're just so smooth. And it's just like, oh, I got beat by a 65-year-old woman. This is not, <laughs> this is not good. <laughs> no, nah, it, was, it was definitely, it was a different thing. Outside my element, but it was fun just to throw everything yeah. in. Do you plan to continue to do triathlons? I don't know. <laughs> um, I've been tinkering with the idea of doing a half marathon. Um, actually, I want to do a half marathon. I have one planned out. I just had to get over the fear of swimming. Yeah. It's not really a fear. It's more of I have to get good at it. And that's where it's just, yeah, I like it's a biking. lot of time. Yeah, it's a lot triathlon, of time. to train like legit for a triathlon, I imagine, would take a lot of time. Oh, it, if you want to be decent, it's like 12 hours. Like in the world of triathlon, they do everything by time. Yeah. So it's like 12 to 14 hours. Yeah. For Which week. I mean, I'm, I've, when I was hitting 90 mile weeks this fall, like I was running 10 hours. I can't imagine. Oh, it's, yeah. it's a different, it's a different ball game out there. Yeah. It's a whole different thing. Um, so how do you continue to train while balancing your work schedule? Definitely have to make some sacrifices. Um, sometimes almost sacrifice fitness in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, like I've been running like ten, and this week was my highest at seventeen. Um, but and it's, a, it's sacrificing sometimes fitness because work can sometimes yeah. be in the wonderful world of our culture. There is no set time. It's when you wake up to when you want to call it quits, and mm-hmm. sometimes you don't call it twits, quits until the sun goes down. So sometimes you got to just sacrifice. But to stay into shape, it's also a lot of motivation. Because once you lose this element of having everybody being a set time, um, like practice time, yeah. it's all on you. It's all on you. And that is much tougher. Yes. And it's a mental game as much as like a physical game of like you get home from work and you're just like, oh, I'm so tired. I just mm-hmm. want to go take a nap. But then it's like once you realize man running actually is so much beneficial it that sort of motivates you and then once you have okay i have an idea of what i want to do i have a race i have i planned all right let's start slowly adding in and it's nice is you don't have any you don't you're not tied to anything Mm -hmm. so it's on your it's it's on on your schedule it's on your schedule it's on your own which is a pro and a con yes yes Yes. there's both there's Pros and cons both sides of it. Yeah. So again, like, what do you do for your job? I'm an agron, um, 
a field consultant, independent field consultant slash agronomist. Okay. And basically, I like to boil it down. I'm a plant nurse. <laughs> You're a plant nurse. A plant, plant soil nurse. So, <laughs> like springtime, we'll go out and we check for stand counts, which is population, see how much have popped out. So let's say the farmer put in, in an, in an, in a row of, in an acre, they put say thirty five thousand kernels of mm. corn. Well, we want to make sure, hey, there's around thirty five thousand. Sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on the um, the planter. And if it's significantly less, to see if they have to go in and uh, replant. And then as the season goes on, checking for uh, weeds, diseases, insects, just any informalities yeah. out there. Just make it as efficient as possible. Yep. In a perfect world, you look out a cornfield and you want to make it look as boring as it can. Tabletop, nothing. <laughs> it's the ones that stick out. Weeds things popping up all over the place, even sweeping. So our job is to make it look as green and as boring as it possibly can. Okay. Because then you know we're doing our job correctly. And then when the diseases come, make sure we call in the right time for fungicide, herbicides, and all that. Yeah. So what have you learned so far in your first, you know, six months working? Um, the start of your career. Start of my career. Um, be patient. Um, try to be more of a, like a people person as well because I run my own crew. So I take people in my in our company car uh-huh. um, and I'm just trying to work with people as well. Always trying to – because when you're – what's unique about us, it's, we're scouts, but we don't go out in our own cars. We're all together. So you're just trying to make it as enjoy- enjoyable as you can with your people. Yeah. So – Okay. Um, on the, and then learning more about soil sampling, about all that. Got to go to a lab. Yeah. We get to take our soil to a very cool lab in Fort Wayne. So just going to load those boxes. So we'll see how that world's going. Well done. All right. So next, that kind of wraps up the interview portion of the episode. So next I have a segment called Overrated, Underrated. And a segment where I ask the man himself, Howie, on whether these most important things on the face of the earth are underrated or overrated. Um, first, I've got a you know a hot one for you, Tom Brady. Underrated or overrated? Overrated by far. <laughs> Why do you say overrated? The dude has very good wide receivers that can help mm. him out and tight ends. And he throws it five yards down the field. I mean, if you put almost any quarterback and have people just doing in at like just cross like cross routes, little dinky like curl routes, drop it off. I believe almost any quarterback. Hey, that dude's oh, he got three options because the cornerbacks are are gone. And then what your wide receivers work? Okay. I mean. Dude, okay, the dude's good. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Dude's good. Dude's good. <laughs> but I don't... Uh, he also got carried by Anna Vinatieri. You don't... You, Anna Vinatieri... You bring bringing up a kicker. Yeah. He got <laughs> carried by a kicker who saved his, saved his butt in the Super Bowl. And then you want to talk about some scandals. I mean, so you're talking... You f- know what? I, I, I'm going to say underrated. That's just me, though. No. And we've gotten into that before. Yes, yes we have. <laughs> okay, I got a good one for you. Eggs. Oh, they're significantly underrated. <laughs> they're, the best, they're the best food in the whole planet. You're te- if we, we talked about this in last semester one of our, in my ad class. If there's one food on the whole earth that you need, <laughs> that you can have, eggs are the most, the most important because they have the most vitamins, minerals. They are the most... Ru- you want to talk about a well-rounded machine? A well-rounded food? Egg, eggs are the most well-rounded. Eggs are it. Yes. Okay. Indiana, overrated, underrated? I have to go underrated. I mean... <laughs> oh, boy. I mean, we have the Indianapolis 500. The greatest, the greatest spectacle in racing. I mean, you got 400 of your closest friends all there. Fantastic. It's a party. Party in May fantastic not to let you know northern indiana have all these lakes summertime we have these lakes people come out mm. have a good time go on the boat but not like minnesota not like, not like minnesota we can enjoy our we can enjoy our we can enjoy the water time a little bit more and let alone winter time ice fishing 
You got very good. We got good rivers. Okay. And well, I'd say Indiana is probably properly rated. Proper. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's under or overrated. It's I, underrated. There's not too many people too hype on Indiana, but the, I don't think there's many many haters. I would say so. Okay. Baseball. Overrated or underrated? I would say honestly right in the middle. Okay. Right in the I mean it's a little bit underrated in my opinion, but okay. Maybe it's I'll, becoming underrated. Becoming underrated because I mean it's America's pastime. Uh-huh. I mean name another sp- at least in America. 1800s is when it, around the 18 late 1800s. That's when MLB, MLB started. And you don't hear about the NFL starting in the 1800s. I mean, soccer is the, on overseas. Soccer has has the longevity, but in the U.S., baseball. Baseball, okay. at least for longevity. I mean, that's lasted this long. Waking up early. There's pro- oh, <laughs> overrated or underrated? Honestly, though, underrated. You get to see a cool sunrise. I don't wake up early that often. Yeah. But now I have to wake up early and seeing a really cool sunrise, that's what gets see, it. I see, I don't know. I'd say waking up early is overrated because of the amount of, the the people that, you know, say that you have to wake up early to do things. Really, it's more important to get sleep yeah. than just wake up early. Because, I mean, if you go to bed at 1 a.m. and then, you know, you're waking up at 5 a.m. to go grind. <laughs> I mean, you're not hours. getting any gains, buddy. Yeah. You got four <laughs> hours of sleep. Yeah, you got absolutely nothing left in the tank. <laughs> yeah, no, you can nothing. ride the injury train. <laughs> yeah. Okay. How about country music? Overrated, underrated? <laughs> Split this into two. Uh, new, new pop country, way overrated. Sucks. Not very good. <laughs> now we're talking like... Randy Travis, Alan Jackson, Montgomery Gentry, underrated. 90s to 2000 is really underrated, really good music. Okay. But overrated for the new stuff. Soil. I was going to say dirt. I had dirt in the notes, but now I got to change it to soil. Overrated, underrated. It's honestly super underrated. (laughs) People don't understand how important it is. If you want things to... I I mean, after sitting down with you, I got to say underrated. Yeah. You look at, I mean, if you want things to grow, especially efficiently, it comes from the soil. You can have the best plant in the whole wide world, but if you put it, try to put it in the most crappiest soil out there, you ain't getting that thing to grow, or it ain't going to look pretty. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, so that concludes that portion of the episode, Overrated and Underrated, with the man himself, Howie. Next, um, we have Rapid Refresh, a reoccurring segment. So a segment where I ask my guests too many questions for them to answer in a timely manner. If you could add one event to track and field, what would it be? One event? One event to track and field. Maybe you can make up an event. Um, Or something that exists, but you'd like like to see added into track and field. Just make it exciting. The outdoor 3K. Not steeple. Straight up 3K. Just the the 3K. Yeah, because it's nice nice between the 15 and the 5. Because sometimes... The five can be too too long for some people, but the fifteen is just too yeah. fast. You have that nice middle ground, okay, without going over a hurdle, yeah, or a barrier. Well, I don't know. Have you ever seen? <laughs> they do it at like relay meets, but like relay hurdles. Oh that yeah, would be the inc- shuttle hurdles. That shuttle would be hurdles dope. would be so fun to watch. That like, would be dope. Like, why can't they just have that more? True. You know? That should just be at more meets. Or we make up a new event and have like the 800 hurdles. The 800 hurdles. And you have you have to have people all the way around the track in case a hurdle falls down. You got to put it back up. Brutal. Or you have everyone. So like. The yeah. So like almost like a because steeple is the first you know hurdle race where um, you don't have to stay in your lane. But imagine an 800 where you'd cut in and you're running that fast. Yeah. I feel like that's dangerous. Hey, it tracks dangerous to begin with. It's dangerous <laughs> okay. already. It would be interesting though. Eight hundred hurdles. Okay, ketchup or mustard? Ketchup. By Why? Because it's probably the best condiment on the earth. Has have you ever had something with ketchup that you're like, I shouldn't have done this? Like, can you ever think of a time when you had ketchup with something you're like, this is nasty? No. <laughs> what is the weirdest thing you've put ketchup on? weirdest thing 
Mashed potatoes. <laughs> mashed potatoes. Uh, okay. To some people, eggs. But that's... I love ketchup and eggs. Well, see, if you're saying just regular mustard, I say ketchup, okay? Like, ketchup is better. But if you go ketchup or honey mustard, like, I'm taking honey mustard. I'm still taking ketchup. I love honey mustard. Like, especially with, like, chicken. I mean, it's good. Yeah, with chicken tenders, it's good. Yeah. I love honey mustard. Um, what is the last song you listen to? Uh, Nookie by uh, Limp Biscuit. <laughs> what? <laughs> I got into some older me- I like metal yeah. rock metal that was the last song I listened to okay well you probably never heard of him but Quadeca's new album just came out that's yeah. that's who I've been listening to no I was listening <laughs> to some new metal some 2000 new metal okay uh, what conspiracy theory do you believe in if any don't believe uh, I mean like when people say we never landed on the moon like conspiracy theory. What, what, what conspiracy theory have you ever believed in? I don't think Oswald killed JFK. Honestly, I think it was. Really? A, I think it was an inside job, and he took the fall for it. That's what I always think. I think <laughs> the JFK thing always. Mm, it, it just sometimes it doesn't make sense. No, nope, because how everything he was, where he was, and the trajectory, it just doesn't. Stuff doesn't match up. Okay. Well, mine is, you know, you see mattress stores, like Laundry Firm. They're like everywhere. It's like a big chain. But, I mean, is anybody ever in the parking lot or in the store? True. They're open all the time. Don't see them. It's a money laundering scheme. Something like that. <laughs> Has to be. That's the Has one. Has to be. <laughs> That's the one. Like, I don't know. If you, I mean, have you watched Breaking Bad? Like, the whole thing? I have not. In parts of it? Just yeah. parts. I don't know. Like, they, <clears throat> like a vacuum store whatever was like used to like wipe people off of the face of their stuff like that you know Hmm. something like that mattress firm is that's that's my conspiracy theory um what's your favorite movie and why oh it's a hard question okay i mean there's a lot of good movies what's your favorite hacksaw ridge hacksaw ridge why well if it's a war i love war movies and then just just his determination um to just get one more person as all hell is breaking loose on him. I mean, he's getting bombarded yeah. by his own artillery because they're trying to soften up the Japanese ridge, and he's bringing injured people, bringing them down. He spends all night long, battles all his inner demons, battles freaking physical like physicality issues, his hands all ripped, and he's carrying these dudes who are dead weight, saving all these people. Inspirational. Very inspirational. Mine at the moment is The Sixth Sense. I just watched it again for like the fourth time. It's just a great plot twist. I don't know. It's Bruce Willis. Come on. Oh, yeah. You can't go so with it's Bruce a Willis one. at all. I see dead people. Okay. If you could have dinner with three people, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Three people, dead or alive, you can have dinner with? Well, I'd love to have dinner with Jesus. Jesus? Because I'm, I'm a religious guy. <laughs> I'd love to eat dinner with Jesus. Um... I'm also a history guy. Um, Calvin Coolidge, because he was so... Calvin Coolidge, just Jesus. Cool guy, mellow, silent cow, didn't say much. And then my favorite president was Theodore Roosevelt. So. And Theodore Re- Roosevelt. Yes. A lot okay. of knowledge going on around that, uh, that t- dinner table. But yeah. To pick the minds of all That would be incredible. Okay, so who are your biggest supporters? Shout them out. Oh, my family to begin with. Um, and not just parents but my sisters cousins grandparents and then honestly just friends yeah former teammates still in connection with a lot of you guys and even with a lot of my guys in high school mm-hmm. got what um one of my biggest supporters actually qualified for the NAI national championships which is um next weekend the 18th yep. so well, good luck to him. Yes, yes. He individually qualified, so yeah. it was very, very good. But a lot of, a lot of friends, family, okay. supporters. Is there anything you wish that I ask you, or anything you want to say, before we wrap up? Rapid refresh. Not really. Nothing. Nothing. All right. So you can sign the table, right now. I just like to thank you for coming on. Um, it's been a good time. So, if you're listening on a podcasting platform. Please leave a review if you listen on YouTube, comment if you made it this far. Um, I post every Sunday at noon. Um, Howie, how can they reach you on social media? Um, Instagram and Twitter, just type in my name, Lucas Howitt. Um, Or on Strava, 
on Strava, dropping the Strava, hey, Lucas Howitt. Yeah, and if you want to follow an old retired ex-collegiate <laughs> athlete, always, maybe meddling in some triathlons, maybe maybe some half um, half marathons, maybe a marathon, maybe you just never maybe. Know, so. All right, so check out any past episodes. Thank you for listening. You got anything else for us? Um, I just want to say thank you for having me on, and people who are getting into new to this this guy knows how to do his research really good at research making sure yeah ask good questions and all that talk to all the people all the people and he's a really good guy to just you know <laughs> hang out and talk with so thank you i appreciate it we'll have a good one have a good sunday peace yeah.